Great. Well, let's get started, I guess. So I will begin by asking you, Sharik, tell us a little bit about the work that you're doing with Dilnas and how the research and the other activities are designed. Sure. So Dilnas and I partnered with a colleague of ours by the name of Aruhi to do some action research. The goal is to do research that solves real problems that communities and nonprofits face. And so we decided to approach this project through a community-based participatory research model approach. Because this the research focuses on how can we use social capital rather than financial capital to help people collaborate, we thought how best can we do that and we thought the best way that we can show that is by having trust between Dil Nas, who's a champion and funder, myself, who's a researcher, and Ruhi, who's a practitioner. And the goal is that if we can emulate trust between the three of us, that becomes an opportunity for others to think about that. So we're looking at how do philanthropists, nonprofit organizations, and practitioners collaborate using social capital. And so we've been using this model and it's been a delight working with both Dil Nas and Ruhi who have a great deal of social capital within the Chicago and larger national Muslim community. Thank you, Sharik. That was a wonderful explanation. Um, let me now turn to Dil Nas. What made you want to be involved with this work? This is not the typical donor donee relationship that we hear about. Thank you so much for Amir um, for moderating this conversation. And um, anytime you can partner with anything that Shark is involved with, well, why not? So that was basically the reason to jump in. But it's also to empower and reimagine what it means to have Muslim led initiatives and making sure that nonprofits that are um, Muslim led are getting the, you know, um, the voice and the ownership they rightly deserve. So as our family is very purposeful in their giving, in our giving, we have family values. Our values are transparency, collaboration, urgency. So we spoke to all these nonprofits and we just wanted to make sure that the nonprofits were um, being heard and they were being uh, really valued for creating a better America. Wonderful, wonderful to hear your perspective on this. So tell us both of you in turn, you know, what have you learned so far? What have been some of the the key challenges and the key surprises, um, and what have you learned uh, to, to, to this point? Sharik, let's start with you. Sure, so, I mean, uh, and again, I think uh, Dilnaz can also jump in, but I think one, idea, one thing that uh, we learned was humility is important, right? I think humility is the cornerstone of building trust, because if you have the humility to, know that you may have answers, but others are possibly going to have better answers, you then open the space up. And I think that's been really important in Dil Naz's approach to the way she works with myself and Ruhi and Lena, and I think all three, four of us. And I think that humility uh, starts the process that allows space to have other people to sort of engage in that. So that's one of the the things that I thought was really important is that we all approached it from this place of humility, and then we structured it. I mean, Dil Naz is a big champion of believing in structure, and I, and as El Amir, you know, I'm not the most structured person. So I think this partnership of the humility that then comes with structure, I think, really helped uh, helped help this uh, collaboration go forward. Wonderful. And what about you, Dilnaz? You, you brought the structure to this collaboration. What, how, how do you see the, the partnership? I actually just thought it was such an honor to work with um, Muslim-led initiatives and hear their voice in um, so many different spaces. So a lot of my learning came from just kind of sitting back and listening, um, even before we started Community Collaboration Initiative. What I heard was number one, um, really a lack of um, capacity building. How do we build capacity in these uh, nonprofits and how can we do it very intentionally? And number two, how do we empower our leaders? We have these nonprofits with amazing missions doing really um, you know, powerful work, but um, how do we uh, empower our leaders to do this even more effectively? And the last thing is, 
you know, we talk about a diversity, equity, inclusion, we talk about, um, you know, microaggressions, implicit bias, and how does that affect internalized Islamophobia? Really, it's this internalized, um, I'm not good enough for this position, I'm not good enough to ask for more funding. And how do we break that cycle and make sure that our leaders are um, getting the capacity building, getting the leadership skills they need to rightly ask for more funding, as well as to tell their story in a form of humility, in a form of, um, hey, I'm doing really great work for a better America. That's great. So humility and confidence can go together. I think that's a, that's, that's a really interesting uh, combination there. And um, support of leaders and, and the capacity building, uh, that's, that's such an important contribution. Are there um, major uh, signposts that you're looking for going forward now what is what is the next uh, what is the next major challenge what is the next piece of promising engagement that you see on the horizon along the same lines year one which was last year was about can we build trust with the between these organizations and themselves within each other uh, and then also, can they build trust within us, with, between them and their facilitators and, their, and the CCI leadership team? And by and large, we found that that was possible. And I think fundamental to that was we were very careful about selecting the nonprofits that would be part of it. So there's that piece of it. Not every nonprofit is built to be trusting. Not every nonprofit is willing to collaborate. So we, we were looking for people that we thought had potential to sort of build those relationships. And so last year we did that. We did find that if trust was broken prior to them joining this initiative, it was very difficult to rebuild that. But if there was, a, if it was a empty slate, people came to it with this inspiration of they wanted to make the world a better place and they wanted to find and experiment new ways of doing it. So really entrepreneurial. This year is different. And so this year is not just on the spirit of entrepreneurialness, but this is about digging deeper and trying to find ways in which they can collaborate systemically. And that, as you know, takes more time. And, and within this process, we come up with that systemic approach so that next year they come together and they go to funders collectively, not as individual identities, but as, an, as a joint identity behind certain values and ideas. And so those are the two next pieces. The first was building trust. And I think we've, well, we, we've seen some really positive numbers there. So social capital can help, help build this kind of idea. But now we're trying to see, can social capital go further and build systemic collaborations that then result in joint uh, collective asks for funding? And so those are the two major signposts going forward. And uh, Dilnaz when the year of learning have been really sort of uh, pivotal in trying to sort of help frame this conversation from just trust all the way to systemic engagement, right? And, uh, and that's been a really important initiative that Bill Nas has been leading. So Shark, I'm gonna um, camel back on that comment that you just made about like the sustained trust that we can build. And I was thinking about how, when we started with um, the first year of um, collaboration through trust building, how these nonprofits really needed to, you know, just jump into something that they weren't comfortable with. They were feeling a bit like, is this the right space for us? So they really needed to take a leap. They were really wondering what is this innovative project uh, really asking for? And everything wasn't as clearly lined out as they may have been comfortable, but they started getting comfortable being uncomfortable. Then this year too, doing this project together was really, you know, again, pushing them to um, work on the trust building, pushing them to be more accountable of each other and where they want to go. But this next year, um, which is 2022, which what we're building on is really understanding like collaboration through sustainability. And that's how the year of learning also started. So the year of learning is really a year which we're in right now 
understanding the funding world. And if we're not getting funding from the philanthropic community, what are um, you know the deficiencies in the philanthropic community as well as in the uh, nonprofit world that is making these doors not open? And if there is something that we as leaders can do to have these conversations with CEOs and presidents of the nonprofit world as well as of the foundation community, let's have those intimate conversations. Let's be vulnerable and talk truth and say, hey, this is why Muslim-led initiatives are not being funded. This is the areas of weakness, and this is what we can work on. Because the more we have these conversations, the more we can get to the next level. And it's also, it's all about collaboration. We've been so fortunate to be really working with amazing foundation partners and amazing nonprofit leaders um, saying, hey, we did this previously, and this is our findings. How can you incorporate your findings with our findings? So it's constantly not working in our silos, but bringing this larger communities together to create a um, you know better impactful philanthropic community as well. That's wonderful. Dilna, as it seems that the collaboration uh, that you have created uh, with Sharik and others is both a means and an end in itself, um, that you're trying to achieve something in terms of capacity building and, and leadership development, but also through collaboration. But the collaboration itself is, is, is an important outcome as well. What would you say to others who are looking to, who, who may want to emulate what you're doing, this kind of um, intimate collaboration between funder, um, re um, action research, and, and, and community nonprofits? What advice would you give to other folks who are considering doing this? Um, it's about if you build it, they will come. So, you know, between the conversations that, you know, Ruhi, Sharuk, Lena, and I were having, we started building it and everyone joined in. And as everyone's joining in, we need everyone's thought partnership. Without their thought partnership, we would not be able to be where, where we are right now. Um, CCI, Year of Learning, really is only doing um, exemplary work because of the great leaders that we have um, in this portfolio. And I I think that's what I would say is like be open to conversations, be open to learning because we are not um, the leaders in this work. We're doing this work together. So I think being open to vulnerable conversations and hearing how others have um, already been um, transformative, transformative in this work and how we can follow the ancestoring, ancestral work that we've been doing. The next thing I would say is being fluid. Like really when we have our leadership calls between um, the four of us, it's constantly like, oh, you know, this is something new or should we include this in? But it's making sure that you're fluid and you don't have just one North Star, but you have numerous North Stars saying, oh, you know, there's so many ways of doing this impactful work. Here's just one option that CCI is choosing. Great. Well, let me conclude by asking each of you to uh, offer our viewers one final takeaway that they must remember in terms of what you have learned or what you are trying to achieve going forward. Let's begin with Sharik and give Dilnaz then the last word. Including a funder and a donor is really exciting and it's really impactful. And that's something I believe in. It's at the core of IUPUI's values as a research community. But what I would say is that not every donor and every researcher should journey together, right? Sometimes uh, uh, funders should fund and researchers and practitioners should do the work. And that's good. That relationship should happen. But, not, but some relationship should result in that journey. And so I think there are two or three things that are important in that point. One is find someone you want to journey with because journeying with someone is an opportunity for you to learn as a researcher, as a funder, as a practitioner. I think the second part of it is, uh, you know, find someone that's up something you want to journey, something you want to, you're really passionate about. It's not some RFP that you respond to. You really have to find something that you really want to do. And so I think not every relationship should be a, uh, this kind of engaged journey, but the unique ones that are, I think are impactful, enjoyable. And I think we grow both as individuals, but then also do the work uh, that's, that comes out of it. Um, I just would add to that saying, you know, being curious is really important and um, being open to reimagining new 
um, areas is really important. So I think with um, what we've do it, we, we've been working on with CCI is we've really been reimagining what it means to have Muslim-led spaces driving this conversation. Um, and as a funder, for me to sit back and really listen to what a nonprofit wants, not um, you know someone saying, oh, this is what's best for you. So making sure that um, we are listening to the nonprofits and acknowledging the very difficult work that they've been doing, especially during COVID, especially during this racial unrest and how um, even during these difficult times, they've been resilient. They've been, you know, performing really high uh, levels of expectation. So um, applauding them for the work that they've been able to achieve. Wonderful. Well, it's a certainly wonderful to have a moment to celebrate with the two of you, this journey of uh, curiosity and collaboration. And uh, we look forward to following um, the evolution of, of this uh, important uh, journey.